It's the NFL on EA Sports. And the question is, are you ready for some football? It's the Chicago Bears and the Indianapolis Colts. And it's coming up next on Madden Football. EA Sports coverage of the National Football League is on the air. Straight ahead, we've got a pretty good one on tap here as it'll be the Chicago Bears taking on the Indianapolis Colts. Brandon Gunn joined here in Indianapolis by Charles Davis. Well, CD, these Colts, they seem to be onto something a few years back. They had the NFL's leading rusher and Jonathan Taylor. But last year, a big fall, down to 4-12-1. And, and they want to get back to what they had a few seasons ago, as you alluded to. Can they get Jonathan Taylor going again on the ground, get their offensive line going? And their defense certainly has to play a whole lot better than it did in 2022. And then for the visiting Bears, they want to wipe the slate clean from 2022. Now, working in their favor, we've seen plenty of teams in the NFL make big turnarounds from year to year. What can the Bears do to you know, just get back closer to maybe seven, eight wins, Charles? Well, they want to coalesce all this young talent that they're accumulating and guys that they brought in from the outside and start to build a culture, a feeling around this team that they know they can compete week in and week out. And the punter, Rigoberto Sanchez, ready to go. And we are underway from Lucas Oil Stadium. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. So here are the Bears now for their opening drive. They'll be led out by a first-round pick back in 2021 from Ohio State. It's Justin Fields. And not only does he have all the skills that you're looking for as a quarterback, he's incredibly tough and plays the game fearlessly as both a runner and a passer. You provide a good running game around him and let him throw deep off a of play action, you've got an all-star in the making. They'll start with the option. Takes this up just short of the 30, but he was able to avoid that earlier tackle. Nice move. He'll pick up seven there on the first down keeper. A little do-it-yourself run right there and a nice game. And I like that he knew that that was about all he was going to get, so he did a nice job of protecting himself, took care of the football, took what the defense gave him. If they continue to allow him to do that, they'll find their way taking what they can all the way to the end zone. Fields. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Not sure what happened out there, but it looked like the timing was a little off on that throw. Well, you know I'm a defender, so what am I going to say? Great defense. Oh, darn right. They did something to disrupt that timing. Third play in this opening drive as they're looking at a third and three. Now Fields. And oh, that nearly an opening drive INT, but it does fall incomplete. Not the way you wanted to start this ball game as it brings up fourth down. Haven't met a corner that's worth this all yet that ever admits to worrying about man coverage. How about the play there, breaking that pass up? The fourth down, so they send out Trenton Gill. Fair catch, signal four, and taken just shy of the 30-yard line. So the Colts now coming out for their opening drive. And here's a look at their leader, standing 6-4. I tell you what, when he's on schedule for that week, secondaries take notice because you've got to stay alert back there on every snap. A truly powerful arm, one that's capable of challenging any level of the defense on any given play. That's why so many scouts preach arm talent when preparing for the NFL draft. A quarterback with arm strength to make every throw in the book, he's an asset to have in any offense. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. So many things have to go right for any passing play to work out. Quarterback has to understand the defense, deliver an accurate ball. Receiver has to concentrate and bring it in. Somewhere along the assembly line, something was off with that one. The throw over the middle, taken in. Nine yards, not quite enough, and they'll be left now with third and one. So, Charles, it'll take nothing away from this young man under center because I know people think he's got a very bright future in this league, but I have to figure the defensive coordinators love the thought of squaring off against a rookie quarterback. And especially if they have guys they can put together a game plan with that's going to confuse, disguise a lot of coverage, 
make this kid think a little bit. Because in college, he's seen a lot of things. Let's, let's not get it wrong here. But at the same time, in the NFL, you can do so much more because of the athletes you have, because of their football IQ. And don't forget, you're going to throw a couple extra rushers at him as well, see if he can handle the pressure when those guys come at him. Again, it's Richardson. And he can't find a receiver, and he's brought down. Sacked by Yannick Ngakwe, the former Maryland Turf. Give Ngakwe credit on that play and for what he's done throughout his career. He's been on five teams across the last four seasons, but has never stopped producing. At least eight sacks every single year, and he's still only 28 years old. Now the NFL's leading rusher in 2021, Jonathan Taylor. And they won't fare much better here as he maybe gets back to the line. Nothing there, no gain, and now they're looking at a third and 15. Defensively, we always know that he is tough in run support, and I think the way that he gets there is he understands what an offense is going to do before the ball's even snapped. A great job of scouting prior to the game, then reading the... Richardson under pressure, and down he goes. And now that brings up fourth down there, a loss of six yards on the sack. It always helps for a visiting team to come in and set the tone on defense. In fact, when we talked with them prior to the game, they said they wanted this home crowd to feel like they had to hide their valuables when they were in town. <laughs> well, the home crowd quiet now early. See if their offense can take over and get some points on the board. Here comes Pettis on the return. So possession goes over here on the punt. And out will come the offense as they take over. Chicago works their way back onto the field here for their second drive of the game. The crowd may be losing just a little bit of the edge after back-to-back -back punts. They want some big plays. They want to see some offense. They want to see somebody break away, whether it's through the air or on the ground. Now it'll be interesting to see where the patience is on both sides. Each head coach, can you hang in there and not try and force something that could put your team in some jeopardy? That O-line, they cleared a big hole there on that run. The athleticism of offensive lines continues to evolve, and we're seeing it here. Not only they're controlling things right at the line of scrimmage, but they're able to get upfield to get to what we call the second and the third levels. You know, get to linebacker spot, the secondary spot, getting all the way downfield with their blocking, which helps keep the running back clean. They'll try to continue that trend here this afternoon. Tackle made by Zaire Franklin. Brandon, five yards on that run. Let's get back to the huddle and make sure if you're back, you spend time with your offensive line and give them credit. Hard to move those 300 plus pounders at the line of scrimmage, and they did for a significant chunk of yardage. Meanwhile, Fields throw here into the hands of Moore. 16 yards is the pickup there and a first down for Chicago. Defensively going forward, they're gonna have to watch out for him up place just like that. It's a drag route across the field, and they're trying to free him up and let him run after the catch. That won't be the last time we see that play, and it works there to pick up a first down. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. Now Fields gonna keep it running left, and holding it may be the wrong decision as he stopped in the backfield. Two yards the loss, second and 12. I don't think there's any doubt that if it's me, I'd be really cautious about continuing to call this play because you got to know, defenders, if they get a free shot at the QB, they want to take it, and they want to take it big. And they got it there on the option play for a loss. Draw play, a give to Herbert. It'll be a gain of five, and it's going to bring up a third at about seven left. A quick burst there, and he nicely bit off a pretty decent gain. to the 24 on third down. Fields. Got a man, it's Tunyon. And down to the 20 he'll go before heading out of bounds. I know sometimes we can get fooled when we watch him make catches as we just saw him do there because he really looks like a wide receiver the way he goes about his business. Yeah, 230, 240 range. Yeah, not, not super huge. Maybe not counted on to be that inline point of attack blocker that we used to have in the good old days. But you can flex him out. You can run wide receiver routes with him. You can make him a primary target. And that's how he'll shred a defense. 
The Bears with the football. We get set to begin quarter number two as they've got it with a first and ten. Here's a give to Herbert. And he's only going to get a yard from the 20 to the 19. That was a really nice play, being able to stack that one up. But they get back in the huddle. He's got to, he's got to tell his guys up front, great job. They kept people off of him, allowed him to run free and make the hit on the runner. Filled the gap nicely, kept him to just a one-yard gain. Looking to throw on second down, Fields. And that is incomplete. A lot of force bearing down on him there. He could not hang on. It's third down. They've given him some different looks here defensively in the early going. He's only hit two of his first five passes. With a big third down coming up, he's hoping he's got a play dialed up that can take advantage of whatever the defense throws at him. Throwing on third down. Fields. Over the middle, and that's caught by Kamek. And the Bears are going to have first and goal as they try to finish off this drive with six points. And in a lot of ways, that catch is expected. Red zone presence, and that one was realized there. You've got to find your tight end in that situation. Here we go now on first and goal. They'll run here with Herbert. And this play doesn't go anywhere. Backwards, losing yardage to the 11. That's going to go as a loss of one on first down. But how about the big guy there showing some agility? He just float from his D-tackle position in order to make that play. So they get pushed back to the 11, and here's second and goal. Fields now to throw. Got a man, and he hits him in stride. That catch good for eight, but still, it's third and goal now. Play action. It's Fields. Steps away. And he takes this one in for a Bears touchdown. Justin Fields, a three-yard touchdown run. And the Bears post the first points of the ball game as they take the lead here in this second quarter. And talk about built to run the football, whether you're calling it on design running plays or him breaking out into the open field after trying to pass the football. Justin Fields knows where the end zone is. Eight rushing touchdowns last season. Only Jalen Hurts had more. Santos with the extra point, and that makes the score 7-0. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. McKenzie will not return this, and it will be brought out to the 25. Second drive coming up here for the Indianapolis Colts. They'll be looking to match that touchdown from a moment ago. 7-0 is the score as they begin with a first down. They'll start this drive out on the ground, and he'll take this ahead for about four. Second down coming up. They'd love to just strike back with a touchdown right here. And if it's a long play, so be it. But the main goal, get a couple of first downs. Run some plays, run some clock. Allow their defense to get a chance to catch their breath, settle down, and relax a little bit after they just gave up a score. Second down, another run with Taylor. And he'll scratch out a yard up to the 30, and that's all. Just not a whole lot of room to operate there on that carry. No, not at all. They did a really nice job staying in their proper places and not allowing any lanes to open up. They'll need five on this play to move the sticks. Richardson shotgun on third down. Oh, he's got his tight end, Mo Alley Cox, complete. 
And he is going to have a coach first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. And that's well executed there on third down. And I love the confidence that they had to let their tight end try and find some space in the middle of the field right in their quarterback's line of vision. And QBs love to make that easy throw. And they hooked up there for a first down. And they'll let the quarterback keep it here on first and ten. And he's got it across midfield and into Bear territory. Give him four yards there on the first down keeper. Well, if you're going to run the read option, typically, you've got to keep an eye on the defensive end. And what does that mean? What are you looking for with a defensive end? Well, you want to play off of what he does. If he collapses inside towards the running back, then you pull it and take it yourself outside in. If he stays outside, you go ahead and leave it with the running back. In this case, pulled it and got good yardage himself. From the 48-yard line, here's the second down and six. Second down, here's Richardson. And he gets it down to the 32. A nice job there on the escape and scramble. A first down, a 16-yard gain. They asked him to take charge and get it to a spot where they could at least attempt to kick before the half. And he does just that. Didn't trust what he saw downfield. So he took it upon himself to get them into field goal range using his legs. That's coming through with a play they needed in a big spot. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. And their back's up against the wall a little bit, and they come through by forcing an incompletion. Now they've got to continue to ratchet up the intensity a couple more times and get off the field before giving up any more yardage. So now second and ten after the incompletion on first down. Throwing again, it's Richardson on second down. Oh, he dropped it. They were looking for him in the middle third. He couldn't catch it. Now third down. That play call wasn't there for them against that coverage. So they're going to spin the dial now in their playbook and come up with one more shot at the marker to try and keep this series going. This offense was on the move. Now two straight incompletions have them looking at third and ten. Richardson. And he'll find Pittman. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made here at the Bears' 12-yard line. Nice third down conversion and even 20 yards. I don't care how many times we see it, I still get a kick out of watching quarterbacks and receivers do the pass tree in pregame warm-up. But I always remember that when we go to practices, we see that after practices as well. They really tune it up, don't they? They tune it up. They know why they do it for these situations. First down. And they build that trust, and that's why they're able to find him in this type of a situation. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. to throw. Here's Richardson. And he takes this one in for a close touchdown. Anthony Richardson taking it in from four yards out. And the Colts are an extra point away from tying the ball game here in the final minute of the first half. I'm pretty sure that that was a passing play, but he took off pretty quickly and ran with it. Love his decisiveness on it because you're exactly right. He was supposed to go back in the pocket and survey the field and throw the football. But when that hole opened, he just said, forget it. Let's go. And boy, did that work out well. Extra point by Gay is up and good. And that is going to tie our game as we approach halftime. So only even at seven now as they kick it away. Taken at the goal line. And he won't get this to the 20-yard line as he's down at the 19. And the Bears going to take over now late in this first half as they will take over here with a little more than 30 seconds remaining. 
Just over 30 seconds to go in the half. They've got it first and 10. Back to throw. Fields. Looks for the out route, and it's complete to command. And he'll get this up past the 25 before he's out of bounds. Well, it's time for them to be good teammates right here. And what I mean by that is possess the ball for a little while. Get at least two first downs. Give their defense a chance to settle down a little bit after they give up a touchdown. Now it's Fields. Pass incomplete. But there's an incompletion partner, and the struggles through the air continue because so far their lack of passing production has led to a lack of points. So the incomplete pass on the last play, and that leads us to a third and three. To throw his fields. And he'll be brought down by the Colts. Now the Colts going to burn the second of their timeouts. So that means they're down to one remaining here as we head toward halftime. Now here's Trenton Gill now. And a fair catch taken back near about the 35, 36 yard line. The Colts come to the line ready to start their next drive. And with decent starting field position, there may be only a couple completions away from field goal range. Throw taken in by Taylor left side. Now the Colts will use their third and final timeout as they stop it with 11 seconds remaining in this first half. So even though it's first down, here's the field goal unit on now to try to get three before halftime. And this is good from 57 yards out. That was bombs away right there. And they take the lead here now at 10 to 7. So as it turns out, a two-play drive resulting in the field goal. Seven seconds to go in the half as the kick is away. So we've hit halftime. Just a field goal separating these two teams at the break. As we send you down to Orlando where Jonathan Coachman has our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. Back to you guys in a bit. But first, we welcome everyone to our EA Sports Halftime Report. This one's been as good as advertised. Just a field goal separating these two teams. This is a very level first half, and I'd expect to see more of the same after the break. Okay, Coach, yeah, adjustments likely going to play a big role in this third quarter in what's been a tight contest so far. A good, tight football game thus far. 10-7 to score as we resume action on EA Sports. From his end zone, Isaiah McKenzie. And only able to get this to the 19, so probably should have opted for the touchback. The Colts going to take over on offense to begin this third quarter. And they've got the lead. CD, what do you think the message was at halftime? I don't think the message was too drastic, I think, at the half, or that they need to change things too much. I do think the offensive line could play a little bit better, 
I think they'll try and help him out more. They'll probably keep the tight end in a few more times and maybe add a running back to the formation to pick up those pass rushers because they probably allowed a few too many sacks for comfort in the first half. From the 25, here's second and three. Richardson now on second down. Hits his target to tight end, Morelli counts. That good for 21 yards on the catch and run. For many teams, the evaluation of tight ends has really changed. We used to wonder about how they would block first and foremost. Now we want to know how these guys can run because we envision them in offenses, catch the ball, how much yards can they gain after that? And that on display there for a good pickup. Up the middle, here's Taylor. And he's got it across midfield and into Bear territory. Stopped on the play by Jaquan Brisker. In the first half, he was held in check on the ground, but despite that lack of production, they still have the lead. Yeah, and they've got to feel fortunate about that. If they could actually get production from their lead horse, that would help open up this offense and widen this margin, too. On second down, here's a keeper by the QB. And he'll get it down here to the 43. He has enough for the first down on the keeper, a gain of six. Well, he is certainly dangerous when he spots a lane, and he keeps it himself there and worked out well. And how about the moving parts on a play like this? You know you have to practice it over and over because it's almost like a ballet that has to be choreographed. But how about once he made the decision to go, he committed to it and went. Let's face it, most teams are going to defend the running back much more than the quarterback on that type of a play. And that's good for a pickup of 10 yards. And that'll leave him with a second and just a few inches left. It certainly feels like there are more stars at the tight end position than there were even 10 years ago. And I think it's become more of a glamour position because of the ways it can hurt a defense. And guys want to be involved. They can be in line, close to the line of scrimmage. They can split out like receivers. But hands, route running, speed, and some toughness to go across the middle. You put it all together, you got a heck of a tight end candidate. Sometimes it's hard to believe, but there are times this game is about patience, isn't it? Has had the game he expected, but that run there, that may get him going. I was just going to say, maybe that gives him a little juice, because you're right, he struggled, especially in that first half. Yeah, and I know the great ones always think to themselves, just hang in there, just one big carry away from busting this open. That's a good start for him. Call it a gain of four on first, and that'll make it second down. Well, you certainly have to give a little credit here because they're playing this game now at their pace. This is ball control football, sustained runs, taking their time, and making it work. Here's Richardson to throw. Got a man. It's Pittman, and he throws it in for the Colts touchdown. A 15-yard touchdown grab. And the Colts take the opening kickoff of the third quarter and drive right down the field to extend their lead. Well, with this rookie QB, we talk a lot about his ball placement and how good he can be at laying it right in there. I think we just saw, Charles, though, the strength of that arm. That was an absolute rifle for the completed touchdown. It absolutely was, and let's face it. You think he was really ready to get that first touchdown? Absolutely. He threw that pass with authority, just as you described. Big-time arm right there, and let's face it. A lot of quarterbacks used to be pitchers in baseball. The fastball was usually their best pitch, and we saw it there. Sanchez now, he'll kick it away following the touchdown. And beyond the 20, but not by much. In fact, just a yard pass there to the 21. Fields and the Bears now with a first and 10 at their own 21. They'll start by running the option to the right. And he probably should have given that one off as he's going to get hit and taken down behind the line. 
DeForest Buckner using that size to force his way in there and make the stop behind the line. Well, we saw a lot of negative plays that resulted in plenty of lost yardage in the first half, and that trend is continuing here. Fields going to keep it once more. And not a whole lot to speak of there as they'll bring him down shy of the 20. He'll get two on the keeper, but it becomes now a third down. Not the start to the drive they were looking for. That run doesn't do much at all. No, not at all. That leaves them with third and long. And you know, this is the time of game where these drives really, really start to matter. They've got to make some moves. Here's Fields. the Bears punter now as he's on here to punt it away. Now fair catch is called for and taken at the, we'll call it the 37-yard line. And they call it 38 yards on the punt, no return. And they will take over first and 10. So good starting field position for him here as they come up first and 10 at their 38. Richardson looking to throw. Isaiah McKenzie hauling it in. Will go down as a gain of six, and that's going to bring up second down. They'll run the toss here with Taylor. And he'll be brought down at the 48-yard line. 43 yards rushing now on eight carries for him so far. That's a nice run right there, able to get to the outside, and so many times defenses say, okay, we got you hemmed in. But if you're running the football, at least you know where everyone is coming from. You don't have to worry about the backside at all. That allows you to run with a little bit more confidence as you traverse down the field. And they run the option here on first and 10. Richardson hit and he fumbles it. And this is picked up by the Bears. And they get the football. They'll set up shop at their own 49-yard line. Problems there on the option and a costly turnover. Yeah, partner, you know how we watch practice sometimes and we see those drills where the quarterback's running with the football and they're swinging pads at him and the brooms are out and they're trying to poke at the football for ball security. I have a feeling next week there'll be an extra session of that each and every day. Starting on the ground with Herbert. And just one yard here from the 49 to the 50. There to stop him, Shaquille Leonard, the linebacker. Three quarters have come and gone. You are watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now in Indianapolis. It's Bears football, but they trail on the scoreboard as we get set to bring you the fourth quarter. From the 50, here's Fields. A throw complete to the tight end, Tunyon. Second catch for him today, and it'll wind up a first down. This defense has certainly had an outstanding second half, haven't they? I know they just gave up a first down there and for the offense. They're hoping that that's something that they can jumpstart with and maybe start to move the ball a little bit better. But it's been tough sledding for them here the entire second half. On first down, it's Fields. That's complete to his running back, Herbert. They'll wind up getting seven on the play, and it's second down. It's a gain of seven. Brings up second and three at the 28-yard line. A handoff for Herbert. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. It'll be a loss of a yard, and that's going to lead to a third and four coming up. They have three tight ends in that formation. That's almost a universal sign that they're planning to run the football. But how about the defense there? They met force with force and caused a stack up behind the line of scrimmage and threw him for a loss. On third down, Herbert. And he went nowhere. He'll lose yardage back to the 29. 
They were ahead of schedule after the gain of seven on first down, but the defense does not budge on second and third. He has just been completely taken out of this game. We're in the fourth quarter. He's single digits in the rushing department. And I know we look at him because the numbers do go to his production, but how about the guys blocking for him? They don't just have his number as a ball carrier. They've got the number of the offensive line and the other guys because they're getting to him before he can get started. Santos' kick is up and through, and they're back with it a touchdown. It's 17 to 10. All right, so they needed two scores to get back in the game. The field goal there, maybe not exactly what they wanted, but the necessary first step. And there's still time remaining, and there's enough time to get it done. They've got to get at the least a three and out here to get the ball back, preferably a takeaway. The Bears send the kicking team out there, and they will send this one away. McKenzie returning it. On the return, it's McKenzie. And able to take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. Indy set to go on offense once more. Right now clinging to a one-score lead, Charles, and I think operating within that four-minute offense with a little less than four minutes to go applies here, right? It certainly does, and that means the playbook is still wide open. But you are a little bit more careful about what you're calling. You want plays they are going to gain yardage, how would you say, consistently, right? You don't need the big shots downfield, but make sure the clock continues to run. Pile up the first downs, and the goal? End the game with your quarterback kneeling down at the end, and you still have the lead. Second down, another run with Taylor. And he'll bring it up here to right at the 40-yard line. Two yards, good enough for first. Well, they didn't accomplish their goal. They didn't get a stop there, gave up another first down. They have all three timeouts in their pocket. I think defensively, you've got to start thinking about using them here. I was just going to ask you at what point you think now's the go time? I think now's the go time. I don't think you sit back and wait because they can take a lot of time off the clock between plays and run three to four and really put you in a stressful spot. And just no chance of turning the corner. He can only get back to the line of scrimmage. Second and ten coming up. Well done to sniff that out defensively. He had it diagnosed pretty quickly. I love that description because diagnosed is perfect on that one. Read his keys, made the play, and he couldn't even get going moving the football. Fourth quarter, down to the final two minutes, and we've got a one-score game. Another running situation on the doorstep as they come up second and ten. They go to the ground again with Taylor. And now we'll see a timeout used on defense as they stop it right out of the break with 1.57 to go in the ballgame. Now this is a big third down, and you'd have to think we'd see a timeout right away if they can't stop him here. From the gun, it's Taylor. And he can only get this to the 42-yard line. And that is not near enough. Now the Bears going to use the second of their timeouts. That'll leave them with just one remaining in this fourth quarter of play. Now here's Rigoberto Sanchez as he'll kick it away for the second time. On the return is Pettis. It will go as a 42, make it a 43-yard punt. Six on the return, and the Bears take over. So now Fields and the Bears trailing 17-10. A minute 45 to play. Needing to go pretty much the length of the football field as they have it first and 10. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down second and right at a yard. I do think it's fair to say that they were caught off guard a little bit. We decided not to throw it on first down. But give them credit. They recovered in time to deny him the first down yardage. But it's only second and short. So that run is still likely to lead to a new set of downs. 
Now he dumps this off over the middle. And he'll get it up near the 35, right at the 34 here. Nothing open downfield. They went underneath. Yeah, see if you can get it to your running back. See if he can make someone miss in the open field. Final minute. One timeout remaining. First and ten. Here's Fields. Nice solid game there, partner, but the clock is starting to become his enemy. Absolutely. Every second right now, more and more precious as it ticks. Here's a second and seven. All eyes on Fields. Now he'll dump it underneath to his running back complete. Now the Bears will use their third and final timeout as the clock will stop with an even 20 seconds left to go. The sound reverberating here in the dome. This is third down. Now Fields. And he can't get a throw off. He's taken down. What a huge play at this point in the game. That time, multiple defenders getting pressure. And it's a loss of six. A fun, close ball game comes to an end. On that last play, Charles, they were on the wrong side of midfield. They needed something near a miracle, and they couldn't get it done. Yeah, the effort, that was good. Very good, in fact. They were just a little too far out to get a decent look at the end zone for that last opportunity. Couldn't get it done, but a nice game overall. So that'll do it for us, for my partner, Charles Davis, and all the hard-working men and women on our crew. I'm Brandon Gaughan. You've been watching the NFL right here on EA Sports. The Colts are winners as we say so long from Indianapolis.